They watch absolute basketball. Um, so take me through the process of being the head coach at Greensboro and then to the head coach at Cincinnati. Uh, you know, when were you first contacted about the job and take us through that process? Yeah, I was contacted. Uh, you know, I don't have the exact dates, but I was contacted over text message by the athletic director, John Cunningham, on a Friday night um, asking if, you know, I had time to, to speak about the job. And I, I've, I've said this publicly already. I, I think I was, I was waiting for that text. It was a job that I always had a tremendous amount of interest in from a distance. Uh, obviously, I didn't know a lot about it intimately because I'd never been in Cincinnati or been on campus, but just looked at the job as a distance as, you know, one of the best basketball programs in the history of our game, the interests and, uh, you know, the fanfare, all that. I, I was, it seemed like a place that would be really special to coach. So when John texted me, I, I responded right away. I'd like to think I responded as the text was coming through. Uh, we spoke by phone Saturday. We Zoomed on Sunday. And then they flew me up Tuesday for an in-person interview with him, and uh, our president. Um, and then I believe it was Wednesday uh, evening when I was offered the job and was flying up Thursday uh, to, to meet with the team and did a press conference on Friday. It, was, it happened very, very quickly. And it's amazing how quickly life can change, especially in our profession. Absolutely. And kind of expanding on that a little bit, you touched on it some, but playing at James Madison and then at UNC, assistant coach at Elon High Point, head coach at Greensboro and stuff. What was it about Cincinnati that kind of drew you out of your familiar geographic uh, region and take on the opportunity? Yeah, you know, I heard that all the time. You know, hey, you, you know, you're, you, you're, you're a Southeastern guy, you're a North Carolina guy. And don't, don't get it. It twisted here, Jamie. I'm really proud to be from North Carolina. I spent the majority of my life in the state of North Carolina. I'm, I'm proud of that. Uh, I have a ton of pride personally, uh, just, just like the city that I'm living in now is a ton of pride. Um, but I was never somebody that, you know, didn't feel comfortable going to other areas. Uh, I, I went to prep school in New Hampshire for three years and had an unbelievable experience in my childhood doing that. Um, I played in, in Europe over in England for a year. Uh, after college and had a good experience doing that. So, you know, even though I'd spent the majority of my life in North Carolina, I never, I never thought of myself as somebody that couldn't get out of my comfort zone and live in another area. Uh, for me, the job at Cincinnati was, you know, one of those jobs that moved me, you know, and I, and I was just, listen, I've always wanted to coach somewhere where basketball really, really mattered, where there's a history and a tradition. Uh, and it, it had been important for generations and decade over, over decade and Cincinnati's one of those programs so that's what really interests me uh now as I, I got into the the interview process and learned a lot more about the job uh the, the people that I'd be working for the institution that's when it became really real but you always look around and you go there's only there's very few programs in college basketball where basketball is a really really big deal you said that's a basketball school that's a that's a basketball city. Um, and, and so I, I knew that from a distance. I think everybody knows that about Cincinnati. But then as I found out some of the other stuff, it, it, it really felt right. And then speaking on the history, uh, Cincinnati does have a proud basketball history dating back to the 50s, Oscar Robertson. But more recently, Bob Huggins really took that thing and, and, and ran with it. Mick Cronin came out bef and before UCLA, you know, nine straight NCAA tournaments and all that type of stuff. First off, have you reached out to Bob or Mick to talk about the school and the program and, and, and there? And then secondly, what do you think your expectations are for this team coming off of the previous regime? Yeah, the history's crazy. I mean, you think about back-to-back -back national championships in 61 and 62. And, you know, they, as you mentioned, Oscar Robertson, who that was the year after he graduated. <laughs> they won the national championship. So think about how good they were when one of the greatest players in the history of our game graduates and they still win it you know, the next year. Uh, so, yeah, the, the tradition is – or the history is incredible, you know, going back 60-plus years. Um, but, no, I, listen, I grew up watching the, the Coach Huggins teams. That, you know, when I, when I grew up – or when I think about Cincinnati basketball, that's my first memory of Cincinnati basketball is, uh, you know, like Nick Van Exel, right, or – that team with Kenyon Martin that was number one team in the country all year before he broke his leg. You know, I, like, I vividly remember that as a young person, uh, being inspired by those teams and the way that they played. And 
Um, so I, when I first got, and then obviously I've been in coaching now for well over a decade and uh, watched Coach Cronin's teams from a distance and always had so much respect for the way they played, uh, how tough and competitive they were and the type of coach that Coach Cronin is. So the, the night I got the job, I, I reached out to, well, I reached out to Coach Cronin that night. I was able to track his number down the night that I accepted the job. Uh, it, it, interestingly enough, this was really neat. He had already texted me. I didn't realize that when I called him because I had so many, had so many text messages. It took days to get through them, but I realized that he had texted me when the news hit that I got the job. But I got his number reached out, and we talked for two hours on the phone that night, um, which I thought was was really neat and says a lot about him and how much he cares about UC and about Cincinnati because he's born, raised, went to school at UC and that type of thing. Um, and then I, it took me a little bit longer to track down Coach Huggins' number, but I think the following day uh, I left a message for Coach Huggins, and it took a couple weeks for him and I to connect, but we did. He's been incredible. Uh, I actually went to a fundraiser that he hosted in uh, Cincinnati shoot, back in June and, and really enjoyed my interaction with him. So, you know, guys like that are, are absolute legends, titans in our game. Um, and to be coaching somewhere where guys like that coached, uh, number one, I think they, they deserve my respect in the position that I'm in. I wouldn't be here. We wouldn't have the opportunity if it wasn't for Coach Crone and Coach Huggins and, and the others that came before them. Uh, but number two, I, I want their counsel and their advice. They know what it takes to be really successful. And they've both been really gracious uh, to, to talk to me and uh, to, to give me some thoughts and, and have both mentioned that, you know, I'm welcome to call them and, and interact with them at any point. You watch Absolute Basketball.